Okay, welcome back to Bebop Review. My name is Andy Shaw, and we're going to look at this. I just want to have a look at this uh, bit of Charlie Parker. This is from the Charlie Parker Omnibook. This is uh, Scrapple from the Apple. Uh, we're just in the bridge section here, and I just want to look at this bit here. This bit here, this E minor A A7. So we're in D, aren't we? Coming out at we're coming out at bridge section in the uh, Scrapple from the Apple. Uh, these tetrachords seem to be ones that Parker seems to like to play. I'll just I'll just write it down and show you. So we're in. Uh, let's have a look. See if you can see that. So we're in D. Uh, for for let's just have a look. It's E minor here. It's going G, F sharp, E, D. Yeah. Now look at that. That's a one two two, which is a major tetrachord from D. So that is D major tetrachord. If you look, it's we're on an E minor chord, and yet this is D. So what you do is, if it's E minor, just go down one. So you, you know, E, go down a tone, and play the major one descending to D. Parker seems to do that quite a bit, so I just wanted to show you that. Uh, so we're playing this D major tetrachord going down. Then we're going into something called M1 C sharp arpeggio. Right, so this is emphasizing a C sharp minor flat five going up to that B there. This here is called M1. It's what, it, what this is about, it's about voice leaning. We'll talk about this later on, but it's getting voice leaning back up. So we, we're coming down by a scale run, then we're going up by arpeggio, and you, you also get this quite a lot in Charlie Parker's uh, m music. Then we're going into this line here so this is m1 and then we're hitting this m1 is them three notes right we usually approach m1 by half a step and then we see that d is leading to c sharp so it's usually half step leading into m1 then we're going up to m, we're going up m1 and we're going to this b so we're spelling out c sharp minus seven c sharp minus seven flat 5 or if you want you can call it C sharp half diminished but I prefer minus 7 flat 5 because it tells you what it is uh, and then we go into another figure uh, that goes like this and then goes F sharp and then A right over and then we're into this A7 chord now that is very similar to a ch another Charlie Parker figure called M28 M28 would look like this. It's very similar to that. It would go D, D, B, D sharp, like that. And then it would go to E, and then to A. So it's very similar, except that would be D sharp, and that's down, that's down a tone, and that's down half a tone. So that, that would be M28. So that's kind of like a variation of M28, isn't it, that? Can you see this on camera, all right? Yeah. <laughs> so that kind of variation on M28, a uh, typical Charlie Parker pattern, right? Then we're going into, this is called M2. It's a variation on M2. I called this M4 in the last video, but it's actually M2. Let me go to that S sharp. I don't know if this transcription is accurate. I haven't got a, an accurate copy of this transcription. I'm, I'm going on the old Charlie Parker Omnibook. So we've got M2, or a variation on M2. <coughs> right, and then that is going into another tetrachord here, another one what Charlie Parker likes, which I want to show you. This is the end of the B section. And this is a 212, which is a minor. So on a seventh chord, if you take, if you, you're saying A7, if you go up one tone to B and play the tetrachord there, it matches really good. You see, that that E matches in that A and that they're both 
they're both in a7 so a good tetra chord to play on a on a a7 or any seventh chord is the tetra chord one tone up from the root of the chord so if it's a7 it would be b minor tetra chord so like if it's b minor if it's b7 it would be b c when it's c sharp minor tetra chord so one tone anyway but Charlie Parker seems to like that one playing that tetra chord one tone up from that and he likes that one which is the D down one tone so up one tone down one down down one tone and a major tetra chord and a minor chord up one tone and a minor tetra chord and a seventh chord okay so I thought I'd just show you that Uh, because it's something you need to be looking out for. Okay, so also I just want to show you another bit. If you've got that, if you wrote that down, I want. I also want to show another thing. Uh, it's in this book. Let me just move that Charlie Parker book out of the way. <coughs> it's this line here from Bud Powell solo on Tempest Fujit. Right. So what I want to show you is this bit here. It's, we're in key of F, right? Uh, it's Bud Pal Solo and Tempest Fujit, and it's this line here. I'll try and spread it out, because I've just done this once, and I'm in a right mess, so I'm doing it again. Uh, C-sharp, B. I'm going to do it right across here, so I'm not getting it. Yeah, that's a C-sharp. Right, if you look here, that tetrachord is 212. That's a minor tetrachord. Right from G coming down, uh, but this it don't make sense as a scale that does it from G. So we have to look again what it is. So if we take it from that, this here, uh, D, and we look like that, we can see another tetrachord there, and that's harmonic. That's a one three one. See that. Wood pal's going directly into that and then directly into that. Then if you look from that G there and run this down, just carry on running this down, so D, F, E, D, you can see that that's another 2, 1, 2 and we've got a link here. So it's a D harmonic minor scale but it's coming down from G. It's playing one minor tetrachord then it's going straight into a, a harmonic tetrachord and then he's kind of putting the link in here so the link is at the bottom so looking at that what Bud Powell's doing there let's just take that out he's actually playing a harmonic minor scale but he's playing it like link harmonic tetrachord and then minor tetrachord straight into minor tetrachord see that it's very clever that I think and he's, again, this is very, very fast. This is a fast tune, Tempest Fuji. So you've got to watch out for things like that and try and see what, what, how it's happening, what he's doing, and what he's, relate, what he's relating to. Let me just have a quick look what this chord is. What's that note there? A and C sharp. So it's A7. Looks like A7, that. Looks like A7. It's definitely some kind of A. He's got 8 A root and C sharp so I would say that's A7 so it's a funny one that isn't it, it's playing D D harmonic minor over A7, actually it's, it's alright that D harmonic minor because A7 goes to D doesn't it, he's just playing a harmonic minor from D so so that's that looks like what he's doing so uh, so it's some, something something you'd have to have quite you'd have to start having a look at things like that. But it's it's unusual that, and I wanted to show it you. Okay. Okay, I just want to show you this bit from uh, Charlie Parker's solo at the Royal Roost on the 11th of December 1948. This is on the Savoy Live Collections. This uh, this recording. And this solo is transcribed by Charles McNeil. He's pretty good at transcribing. I've played this solo. It's, it's okay. It's pretty accurate. Uh, if you look here, you've got 
two tetrachords. I want to show you something about tetrachords. Notice that Parker doesn't play this on beat one. He's running up low, he's got this half tone leading to M1, this is the arpeggio M1, and then we've got a tetrachord here, right, and then another tetrachord at the beginning of this bar. He doesn't play a long scale from beat one down to four, he starts on beat two. I'll just tell you that, because it, it's, it's just something about bebop, you seem to get tetrachords. But these two tetrachords put together, and what we've got is D Dorian, haven't we? We've got a 2-1... A 2 one, 2 separated by a link by 2 one, 2 that's a Dorian mode, right? It's unusual that, to actually see eight, nine notes in a row running down, because usually when you see four or five and then you move up. Uh, and then he runs into this changing tone here, and then he's jumping up to this A. Now, it's this bit I want to show you. Remember what I said about if you get a minor chord, what you do is you, you go down one, so you would go down to E, an E major, playing an E major, and that's what Parker's doing here, but it's similar to Bud Powell, he's actually altering it slightly. You've got E, F sharp, G sharp, and A, so that spells out 2, 2, 1, which is a my, uh, major tetrachord, but he's put this elaborated F natural in, right, just like Bud Powell put a changing tone in, so you've got a changing tone here, and Powell, uh, Bud Powell, remember, when I was showing you that in the last episode, uh, last lesson, Bud Powell put uh, M5 in, this is a, just a changing tone though, it's not M5, because that's F natural, going to G sharp to A, so we've got a changing tone here that's elaborating this tetrachord, you want to watch out for things like that, I want to show you that, it is following the rule that Parker is playing, the tetrachord chord, one tone down from his F minor, which is E, so it's E major. This is one of the favourite things he likes to do. But he's put this changing tone in, so you want, you've got to watch out for that. When you're looking at solos, Parker's solos, and you're seeing these little patterns and stuff, actually look out and, uh, for things like that, because all these little things just make it sound better, if you know what I mean. And then he goes into this interesting thing here, which we're not talking about at the moment. Uh, so let me just think if I can see any more tetrachords to show you. Okay, there's another one to look at. This is uh, Bud Pal's solo on Strictly Confidential. We're in the key of E flat major, and it's this chord C minor seven. Uh, if you look, it's going C minor seven F minor seven B flat uh, seven. So we're actually in the key of what we're in the key of E flat, and what. Bud Powell, let me just write that down if I can. B flat, E flat, A flat. Bud Powell's playing this tetrachord B flat, A flat, G, F. And if you look at that, it's a 2 1 2, isn't it? Because you've got this half tone between G and A flat. So that is F minor tetrachord. Now, Parker, for sure, you, when Parker's playing, remember this is an E flat, so we're bringing this A flat in because we're in E flat. Parker on a C minor 7 would go down one. I might do this as well, I don't know. Uh, so we've got B, C, D, E flat. So Parker would play something like that, which would be a B flat major tetrachord, and that would be 2, 2, 1. And that would fit this C, C minor 7. So you've got that, which is E flat going with it, and the C, the root. And in this one, you've got the 7th, right, and the 5th. So you've got a choice there. If you play the mi F minor, right, you go around the cycle of 5th one from, from C, you get... You can play the F minor, but if you go around, if you go one tone below or round the cycle of fifths twice, because if you've got the cycle of fifths, C, F, B flat, you go around twice, you can play a major. So you go around, if, you want, if you've got a C minor 7 chord, you go around the cycle of fifths once, you can play a minor. If you go around twice, you can play a major. Or you can see it is, if that's C minor, you can one tone down, you can play a major. Okay. But you see any t any way you want to see it, uh, but just just be aware that on the C minor seven, you can play F minor, but you're bringing this A flat in, which you might not want because if you're playing in the key of B B flat major, which C minor seven usually goes to in a minor key, don't it? You go C minor seven, 
F7, B flat. You might want to put play that F minor. You want to pl might play that to keep all notes clean. So Bud Powell's doing it because we're in the key of E. We're in the key of E uh, E flat major. So hope you can uh, understand that. So it don't matter if you don't because we'll we'll go on and on as we get more into harmony. This will just come natural, I suppose. Although it don't come that natural to me. <laughs> Don't come that natural, natural to me. A lot of it is quite complicated when you start looking into this stuff, trying to analyse it. Okay then, so uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>